Well, my friends, as you all know, we just received the second and final big update for Android 15, as we just got the QPR2 stable launch alongside the March feature drop. And yes, while there are some new features that we discussed in our full video, which is linked down below, we also received the March security patch as well, and with it comes a ton of fixes for our Pixel devices. So real quick, let me give you the full rundown on everything that's fixed and tell you everything you need to know. And of course, if you appreciate content like this, please consider subscribing to the 9to5Go Google YouTube channel. If you're into Google News like we are, then you should be right at home here and we'd love to have you as part of our community. Getting right into it, this security update as a whole really provides fixes for the entirety of the Pixel lineup from the Pixel 9 all the way to the Pixel 6, covering many aspects of the experience from apps to audio to camera to the user interface and so much more. For starters, Google did push out a stability fix for certain apps using WebView services. For those who don't know, WebView is a component within Android that allows apps to display web content, and you can typically find this inside news or social media apps, or sometimes the in-app help sections also display a web view of sorts. With this fix, interacting with web view content should be smoother and more stable. We also received a fix where users experienced issues adjusting call volume on calls over Bluetooth headsets. This fix addresses problems where users couldn't properly control the volume of phone calls when using a Bluetooth headset, and after this update, you should be able to reliably adjust call volume now. In regards to the camera, Google has noted general improvements for camera stability in certain conditions, which should translate to fewer crashes or freezes of the camera app, and as a whole should be a more reliable experience. Graphics-wise, there is a fix for display stability and performance for the Pixel Fold and 9 Pro Fold specifically, and should address issues where the display might flicker, freeze, or just behave erratically in general. If you're a foldable user, let us know how it feels. After this update, it should be more consistent now, especially when when opening and closing the device or transitioning between screens. Another change we've seen is general improvements for system stability and performance. This, according to the blog post here, applies to every Pixel device across the board, from the Pixel 6 to the 7 to the 8 and the 9 series, and even the Pixel tablet. Unfortunately, the verbiage here is a bit vague as to what specifically has been improved here, but it's safe to say we can expect our devices to be less prone to crashing, freezing, or unexpected slowdowns, and overall, phone operation should feel more responsive. Responsive. For cellular performance, Google did list some general improvements for network connection stability and performance in certain conditions. Hopefully, this translates to fewer drop calls, better data speeds, and improved call quality overall. Lastly, for general fixes, Google did list a few improvements directly related to the user interface, that being a fix for an issue that occasionally caused the color scheme in the launcher preview to not match the selected wallpaper. It's a purely visual fix that should ensure colors in the app launcher preview correctly matches the colors of the chosen wallpaper. Another visual fix is for an issue where home screen icons appear transparent after unlocking the phone or switching apps. Sometimes the apps would become invisible or see-through, which can definitely be frustrating. There's actually one more fix for icons here as well, where themed icons would sometimes not match the color scheme of your wallpaper, and of course, that should be patched out now. Interestingly enough, there is a big UI fix here that I actually didn't see a whole lot of discussion about, but the March security patch also fixed an issue with switching between apps when using third-party launchers. It's been a big issue for a long time now, but with this update, app switching with custom launchers should be smoother, less glitchy, and hopefully there are fewer of those awkward delays when transitioning between animations. And of course, to close out the fixes, it is worth noting there are general improvements for performance and stability in certain UI transitions across the board. Overall, this March update seems to be all about refinement, tackling a wide range of issues, and as a Pixel user, I'm always looking for a smoother experience, so I'd say this is a healthy, quality update to say the least. But that is not all, as the Pixel Watch also received a pretty major update here with the rollout of Wear OS 5.1 that has its own changes that we're going to cover real quick. This update, being Wear OS 5.1, will be rolling out to the Pixel Watch 2 and 3 and will be based on Android 15. With this update comes a few new features like Credential Manager Support, which is an API that offers a unified authentication solution supporting passwords, pass keys, and federated identity like sign-ins with Google. Basically, in layman's terms, this should streamline the login process for anything you need to do on your wrist. Another huge change, app developers can now utilize watch speaker playback if a device supports it, so you will be able to select the watch speaker for media output if you prefer. I gotta be honest, I don't know who would want to do that since watch speakers typically aren't the best, but if you want to, 
it's all yours now. Google did add a highly requested feature as well in Aware OS 5.1 with a new developer option called Force Global Always On Display Experience. With that toggled on, it will turn off the blurred clock animation you see when you put your wrist down while inside an app. I'm sure this will have some kind of effect on battery life, but you can activate this in the developer settings if you want to take a look. Another change here worth noting, the yellow default accent color is being phased out in Aware OS 5.1 and instead is being replaced with a gray a color scheme. To me, this could be a precursor to a proper dynamic color option or allowing users to set their own theme, which would be awesome if so, and I really, really hope we see this in the future. One last thing to note about Wear OS 5.1, it's currently rolling out to the Wi-Fi only variant of the Pixel Watch 2 and 3 at this time, while the LTE variants and the Pixel Watch 1 are set to get the update at a later time. So if you have an LTE Pixel Watch like I do, just be patient as I'm sure we can expect this to arrive in the coming week. And of course, I did want to mention some features included in the March feature drop as well. For starters, the auto bedtime mode introduced with the Pixel Watch 3 will now be available on the Pixel Watch 2. Loss of pulse detection will be arriving on the Pixel Watch 3 sometime in March after receiving FDA approval. Menstrual tracking is now available on the Pixel Watch 3 for logging periods, viewing cycle stats, and predicting your next period. And there is an improved step tracking algorithm for activities like jogging with the stroller, pushing a shopping cart or wheelchair, and hiking with poles. From what I can see, another solid update for the Pixel Watch if you have one. And that, my friends, is everything you need to know in regards to the March security patch for Pixel devices. As with the March feature drop, this patch seems like a big one that should make your devices more stable and to me is a healthy update to round out the winter season. With that said, my friends, leave a comment and let me know what you think of this update so far. Of course, we know it's still early as the update has only been out for a few days now, but are you noticing the added improvements and more more importantly, are there any big issues that are still outstanding that Google hasn't addressed yet? Please leave a comment and let us know, but in the meantime, I'm getting out of here. Before I do, huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now and stick around and subscribe for the highest quality Android content on the platform. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.